Hello, good morning and welcome, thanks for coming. I'm James, I'm an engineer, um, I'm working at Docker, I'm working on Scout and on Docker Official Images Security. And with me is uh, Ethan from Bastion Zero. Hi, I'm Ethan from Bastion Zero um, and I'll be talking about the open pub key uh, part of this talk. So you, may, you guys may have noticed um, in the press, on social media, there's been an announcement. Um, Docker and Bastion Zero are working together with the Linux Foundation on a cool new signing solution. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, but first, I'm going to um, try and put this into a Docker official images context. Um, Ethan will go into the details of OpenPubKey. And um, hopefully, we'll do a demo if the network's working. And then we hopefully we'll have start, uh, some time for questions at the end. So as a little disclaimer, um, we're going to be showing some code. Some of it doesn't exist. Some components don't exist. The code exists. Um, you can try it at home. It's probably full of bugs. Uh, don't rely on it. It's not production ready. So you've been warned. So what are Docker official images? Most of the people here should know what they are. You're at DockerCon. Um, but the, probably the most important um, thing to mention is that it's one of the largest um, sources of open source packages in the world, if not the largest. I think that's what Amy, Amy said at the, uh, at, the, um, at the beginning of the conference. There are 150 repos, thereabouts, across many, many, many platforms uh, and architectures. So securing the supply chain of Docker official images um, is really important to Docker and really important to the community who who help us to um, maintain them. So to also build on that context, the uh, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Agency identified two key areas to focus on when it comes to open source. And the first one is um, vulnerabilities. And there's been a lot, a lot of talk about vulnerabilities and remediation um, and developer workflows early, earlier in the conference. And in fact, Christian's doing another talk um, later on today. So look out for that. Um, but we'll be focusing on the second bit, um, on the supply chain associated with, with Docker official images. And Docker's in a pretty unique position to um, be active in this space, not only because we produce them, uh, but also because you know, we ship a client to 20 million laptops. And so we can start doing stuff with, with both of those um, sides of the equation. So you can't really talk about supply chain without mentioning Salsa. Um, if you don't know what Salsa is, um, it's not your lunch. It's a framework for uh, modeling your supply chain. It has levels. You're supposed to um, incrementally improve your security by going up those levels. Um, we're all at level zero. So congratulations, we did it. Um, but for, but uh, seriously, for Docker official images, we're going to be trying to um, get to Salsa level three. Um, we're not really going through this process. It doesn't really make sense for us. We've got quite a lot going on in the hardened build area already. We've got a lot going on in provenance. Some of, some of our official images already have provenance and S-bombs. Um, but today we'll be focusing on the signing bit. So in going down this rabbit hole, we kind of um, figured out that it's not just about signing. It's all about who's signing and why are they signing? What are they signing? There are lots of examples of signing in the industry that are very successful in getting people to sign. For example, GPG, everything um, um, in the Maven central repository is signed using GPG. But who's verifying those signatures? What's the value of those signatures? So unless you solve the verification problem, um, you've got to ask the question, like, what is the real value? So as I said before, I think verification is the important bit. And so for Docker official images, what we want is for verification to be the default, not an opt-in. Um, and so what that brings us to is a distribution problem, ultimately. How do you get the certificates, the trust policy, any revocated, um, revoked um, artifacts and certificates to the clients in a safe way? And any code needed to do the verification also needs to move down to the client. So and policy as a producer of Docker official images, we have a policy. We want to say all of them should have a signed SBOM attestation and all of them should have a provenance attestation. So how do we do that? We're looking at using Tuff to do this. It's one way to do it. Um, I look at Tuff as, um, as like an app store, 
like your iPhone that probably has a tough-like implementation. Certainly your browser has a tough-like implementation for bringing down the CA store. So it's a good pattern for ratcheting forward security. It has a time stamping service so that it, your client always knows that everything is up to date. And there's a spec out there, there's code that's well motivated and it's being used in, in the world by PHP and Python and various other um, uh, package managers. So in the context of Docker, what does this look like? So here's some boxes, boxes and lines. Um, over in the left-hand side, we've got a GitHub action, our tough repository in Git. The idea is that that's man managed by Docker staff and that sets which keys, um, what the policy is, which attestation should be there. That will be automatically published into the registry. The registry is a nice native place for representing TUF. With TUF, it doesn't matter where you store stuff, it's all cryptographically secure. So the registry is a good place. On the right-hand side, we have the signer. Um, this kind of framework with TUF could work with any signing technology. Um, so we kind of see this as a, a good substrate for delivering um, signing technologies to Docker official images. So Docker's clients, when you do Docker pull, the idea is, is that the, uh, the TUF root is embedded in that client. It will check that it has the latest version of the trust policy when you do a Docker pull, but it's also going to check the signatures. So although we can put any old signing on there, we really do care about the signing technology. We want a signing technology that's um, super simple, easy to explain, um, is easy to deploy. You shouldn't need an extra um, trust point in order to verify Docker official images. You're already going to be trusting our tough route, so we don't need another CA involved. Um, we should just be able to trust the signatures from Docker. So it should be secure. It should use current crypto. We're not going to invent any of our own crypto here. Um, we learned that the hard way many years ago. And it should be open and it should be free. And so with that, I'm going to hand over Ethan, who will tell you the details of our solution. Thanks, James. So I'm going to be talking about OpenPubKey, which is uh, a protocol for signing objects and verifying them under identities. So before I begin, I want to um, explain the problem that OpenPubKey is trying to solve. So imagine you have some workload, say a GitHub action, and we're just going to name this uh, workload Alice for the purposes of convenience to refer um, to the workload, but it's uh, not a user in, in this context. It's just, uh, it's just a workload. And it creates some image, and it signs this image, and it uploads that image along with uh, Alice's signature and Alice's public key to a registry. Now, Bob trusts Alice uh, and downloads the, the image, the public key, and the signature. But Bob uh, wants to check the signature and make sure it's signed. And Bob has a, has, has a question. Even if the public key verifies for the signature, uh, how does he know that this public key is, in fact, Alice's public key? It could be anyone's public key. Anyone could put a public key here. Um, so when we talk about uh, workload identity uh, with uh, GitHub Actions, um, we should think about uh, OpenID Connect. Um, GitHub Actions has an IDP, an identity provider, uh, built on OpenID Connect that allows, um, uh, that provides identities to workloads and allows workloads to prove their own identity. So we're going to we're going to build the solution to this problem of how do I know this is really Alice's public key using uh, OpenID Connect. Um, and so OpenPubKey is a protocol for binding a public key to an identity using OpenID Connect. The, the advantages of OpenPubKey is that uh, you don't have the key management headaches if you have like a long-term signing key where you have to load them from device to device. If a user loses that signing key, um, now you have to create a new one. Um, using OpenPubKey, you can generate signing keys as, at will, delete them when you don't need them anymore. Um, uh, it works without any changes to your IDPs. So uh, you can just use this for Google or GitHub or Microsoft um, uh, today. Um, and it's secure. It doesn't add any trusted parties. So we're not saying, here's a new CA that you, you have to use. It's just you and your identity provider um, as it was before. Um, and now I'm really happy to announce that with Docker, OpenPubKey is now a Linux Foundation pro uh, product, uh, project um, and is available open source so people can build on it. Um, 
So before I explain the details of how Open PubKey works, um, I need to provide a little background on um, OpenID Connect, and I'm going to use GitHub Actions as the example here. So we have our workload um, that we've named Alice for convenience here. Um, and uh, this workload um, can authenticate to the GitHub Actions IDP. And when it does this, the IDP will create a ID token, which has a number of attestations about Alice's identity. Um, and the uh, IDP will sign this ID token under the IDP signature. Alice can then present this ID token to Bob. Um, and Bob will be convinced that Alice is Alice. Bob can go and check that the ID token is signed under the GitHub Actions um, uh, public key by downloading the public key uh, at uh, the GitHub JWix URI, which is an OpenID Connect way of making public keys uh, available. So how are we going to make this, make this work and add signatures to this? Well, um, I'm going to provide a simplified version of OpenID Connect. It's basic, uh, uh, open pub key. And then I'll provide um, the, the, the little bit of complexity that OpenPubKey um, adds here. Um, but basically, OpenPubKey, it's uh, the same as before. But now Alice generates a public key, uh, generates a key pair, a public key and a signing key. Um, and notice that there is this audience claim here, which uh, is, part of, um, is part of GitHub Actions. Alice can put uh, whatever she wants in this uh, odd or audience parameter. And so she puts her pub key in the audience parameter. Um, and then when the IDP signs the ID token and returns it, um, the IDP will just put whatever, whatever value Alice supplied, we'll put it in here. So if Alice puts her pub key, uh, there is now an ID token signed by the IDP that contains Alice's pub key along with her identity. So Alice can now sign objects. Um, and if she publishes her ID token along with the signed object, um, uh, Bob can check that that object is signed under Alice's identity because the IDP has attested to the pub key used by Alice. Um, notice that in some sense, the ID token is functioning like a certificate issued by a certificate authority, um, a binding uh, identity to a public key, but we haven't added a certificate authority here. It's just the regular old IDP that you've used before. Um, so this also works for user identity, and I won't go into the full details here, but you can do this with, um, say, like Google's OpenID provider. Um, you just have to change the uh, audience parameter to a nonce parameter, um, uh, and then you'll get the, the public key in here. Um, and we're actually, at Bastion Zero, we use the, the user identity rather than the workload identity. Um, and it's a really powerful tool because we can uh, essentially get a signed statement that says, Google says Carol's public key is X. Um, and so you know, if you think about SSH, what, is, what, are, SSH's, what are SSH pub keys doing? They're uh, saying that this person is allowed to connect because, they, uh, because this pub key is there. But we don't need that anymore. We can do SSH without SSH keys, just uh, trusting the IDP to identify users, which everyone is already trusting the IDP. Um, we also use this to build TLS uh, tunnels secured by user identity. Um, and we can uh, have identity be checked at both the network layer and the server, uh, server or like end host uh, or K8 cluster um, uh, by just uh, checking that the identity has the pub key that uh, we expect. And then you can bootstrap a authenticated or secure channel there. Um, and uh, one of the things this allows us to build is we can do logging and policy enforcement without trust. So the integrity of the message uh, can be um, protected so that the logger or the policy enforcer can't change messages because we have a, a pub key protecting it, um, uh, but it can still log and uh, enforce policy on that traffic. Um, I'm not going to go into any real detail about any of this, but ask me about this after the talk. Um, I, love, I love talking about it. What we built is really exciting. Um, so notice that there's a tension here. Uh, OpenID is treating these ID tokens as authentication secrets that have to be uh, kept secret and then revealed to authenticate. Uh, the name for this pattern is uh, bearer's authentication. You bear a token to authenticate. Whereas OpenPubKey 
um, is treating these ID tokens like public certificates. You publish them with a sig uh, signature, potentially on like a public registry um, or you know, anywhere on the internet, and you use these to verify that the, uh, that the object has been signed by the identity. So these two, these two uses are in tension. Um, what if, for instance, someone takes an ID token uh, that was published for OpenPubKey and replays it to a OpenID Connect um, uh, authentication service that is misconfigured so it doesn't check that this is uh, for OpenPubKey. It doesn't check all the fields that it should. It just says, hey, you know, GitHub or Google says this is Alice. Um, how do we prevent those sorts of attacks? So let's look at the attack in a little bit more uh, specificity. So you have Alice. Um, and she is sending her uh, ID token and assigned object to Bob, same as before. But now we have evil Bob. And evil Bob takes the ID token and, and replays it to a misconfigured OpenID Connect service and says, hey, I'm Alice. And the service says, hey, it's signed by GitHub. You are Alice. Um, so our plan of attack to solve this is that we want to preserve the security and cryptographic properties of ID tokens, but make them valid for uh, open pub key, but not valid when used for open ID connect authentication. So to do this, Alice is going to replace um, the IDP signature here with a proof that uh, she knows the IDP signature, a cryptographic proof that she knows the IDP signature. So this will be uh, as strong as the actual signature but won't be the signature anymore. And so the technique we use for this is GQ signatures. So she takes the IDP signature off and uh, provides a proof of signature that she knows the signature of the ID token. The result of this is that if this ID token with the signature, uh, with the proof of signature, is replayed to a misconfigured service, it's, the misconfigured service will attempt to verify it according to the rules of OpenID Connect, and it will fail, and they will reject it so it can't be abused but this proof of signature has the same security properties of the signature while allowing Alice to keep the actual signature uh, secret. Alice could even delete the actual signature uh, so that it could not leak out once she has her ID token. Um, uh, I won't go into the details of how GQ signatures, the, techni the technique we use, works. Um, I'll point out that it was invented in uh, 1988 in this uh, pretty famous paper. Um, and then Newman, uh, just this year, proposed using GQ signatures to solve exactly this problem um, and even uh, addresses uh, open pub key and SIG store as uh, potential use cases for GQ signatures. Um, and so a lot of what we're doing is, is based on this paper uh, when it comes to GQ signatures. So remember how I said that there was a simplification here where um, we didn't just put the public key in the audience claim? Well, now I'm going to explain how it's a little bit more complex, but not that much more complex. Um, there's some additional metadata that we want included along with the workload's uh, public key, um, such as, say, the algorithm that the, signing, uh, that, the, that the user will sign by, and maybe some additional claims that, uh, that Alice wants to make, um, or Alice's client wants to make, the, the workload's client wants to make. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these, uh, this metadata along with the uh, public key, we're going to hash it all together, and then we're going to uh, actually supply the hash to the audience claim rather than um, all, of this, all of this data. Um, but notice that the, the, uh, Alice's public key is still in that hash. Um, a result of this is that the ID token alone no longer allows someone to check whether the public key is uh, attested to in the ID token. Um, you need these other fields as well. So we want to package these all together as one object. And we use the fact that the ID token is a JSON web signature. And JSON web signatures support having more than one signature on them. And so we add a second signature and header that contains the values that we're going to hash into the audience, including Alice's public key. And we call this the CIC. Uh, don't worry about the name. It stands for client instance claims. Um, but know that it contains the public key and then some other uh, metadata. Uh, and we call this whole thing a PK token. It's an ID token augmented with this ability to verify that the public key is attested to in the ID token. Um, so let's say Alice wants to uh, sign an image. 
um, using OpenPubKey. So the first thing she's going to do is generate a, uh, a key pair, um, including her signing key. She's going to create the CIC, um, which includes her public key and other metadata. Um, and then she's going to uh, hash the CIC and request an ID token supplying the hash as the audience parameter to the IDP. The IDP, in this case GitHub, will reply with a signed uh, ID token. And using what we uh, just talked about in the last slide, where she creates a new signature on the, uh, on the ID token, um, she will now create a PK token from the ID token. Um, and yeah, and you can see that it's just an additional signature on the ID token. The ID token is part of the PK token. Um, and now she's ready to sign. So she takes the image that she wants to sign, she signs it with her signing key to get the signature A, and she uploads the image, the, uh, the signature, and the PK token uh, to a repository. Um, in Docker's case, Docker is doing uh, single-use signatures, which is a, a feature of open PubKey. Um, and this ensures that a PK token can only be used to sign a particular object or particular image. Um, and to enforce this, uh, we use this, uh, we use the client instance claim and we provide an additional parameter, sig, which is just the hash of the object to be signed. Um, so that signing key can only be used for that object. Um, when Bob wants to uh, verify um, a signature that's been signed under OpenPubKey, uh, Bob downloads the image, the signature, and the PK token, checks that the ID token inside the PK token is signed by, say, GitHub, um, checks that the CIC um, uh, hashes to the audience, um, extracts Alice's public key from the CIC, um, and then checks the, the image is signed by, um, that the image is uh, signed by the PK token, which Bob now knows is uh, Alice. Um, so in summary, um, open pub key does not require any changes to the IDP. Um, uh, it just works using the OpenID Connect uh, protocol, but it augments it with this ability to bind signing keys and uh, uh, public keys and identities. Um, it's very extensible. You can build lots of different things. We're looking at one use case with Docker, but for example, some MIT students uh, read the paper and wrote an encrypted chat room using OpenPubKey and uh, MIT's OpenID Connect IDP. Um, it's secure. There's no uh, new um, parties that are being added to OpenID Connect. Um, and with GQ signatures, we can uh, ensure that even against misconfigured services, these ID tokens can't be replayed. Um, and it's convenient. There's no key management. Signing keys are ephemeral. And it uses the open ID flow that, uh, uh, that's already being used for users and workloads when, say, someone signs in with Google or has a GitHub action. Um, for full details, uh, the paper's focused a little bit more on user identity, but see our paper here. Uh, now I'm going to turn it back over to James. Thank you. Thanks, Ethan. Amazing. That stuff is so neat. So what I'm going to try and do is demo just that small flow. Um, where's, oh, where's my mouse gone? There we go. What I'm going to do, make an important change. I think that's already made um, to my uh, my Docker image, look at my code, commit at the change, sign it. Push to GitHub. Uh, where is that? And over here on, uh, on GitHub, we should see uh, the commit coming in. There we go. While that's building, I'll show you what the GitHub action looks like, the, the changes. So right here, we've just added another build kit image. That's a nice way to um, extend build kit. That's just a fork that's living on open pub key. Um, um, uh, uh, GitHub organization. Um, in the future, we hope to try and negotiate with those guys to try and get that built in. So use the GitHub action, you automatically get signed. You don't have to do anything, zero configuration, no management of keys, no secrets stored anywhere, nothing at all. Um, so do, do head over to um, the Open Pub Key organization um, on GitHub. This is where the code is. Um, this is the main library contributed by um, uh, Ethan, 
This is a little Verify CLI plugin, which I'm just about to show you, or you probably, probably saw my cached version. Um, and here's the build kit fork. So go over there, um, get involved, raise issues. It's probably broken, so please get involved. So back here to my terminal, I should be able to Docker Verify. And if you look carefully, when it returns, thank you, Internet, um, we can see that the, um, all of the details in the ID token um, are, being, are being verified. They're checked that they're signed by GitHub. We've checked the, the Docker organization. If I did this again with, a, with the wrong one, it should fail. Show that it's not vaporware. Oh, did I get that right? Oh yeah, it did fail, there we go. Um, we're still working on the policy bit. We, we need a policy language that can um, um, bring down to clients. So that's as yet undefined. Um, at the moment, the attestations are in, in Toto format, and I'll show you a bit of that. Uh, hang on a minute. Oh. So just to put that into a little bit of context, because tell you which bits we've done and which bits we haven't, and although Ethan didn't touch on it, one important aspect probably is to add a transparency log here so that all of the signatures um, that are generated um, on GitHub Actions, uh, certainly for the Docker official images use case, we're keeping an eye on GitHub and we're putting it in the transparency log. So if anything does go wrong there, we can notice it happening and we can, we can attempt to fix it and we can always revoke using um, tough. So, oh, the other thing I forgot to mention um, and it's an important step. As everybody knows who works, works with OIDC, those public um, keys expire, and they rotate them. They rotate them regularly. They, don't, they can change their rotation frequency. This happens all the time. Um, and so what we're going to do, at least with the first drop, the plan is to put the, uh, for Docker to put those public keys into the tough repository and distribute them down to the client. That works for Docker official images. That might not work for anyone, because if you're trusting our tough repo, you can trust us to put those public keys in there. Having said that, and um, again, Ethan didn't mention that, but you know, what, what are we going to sign our tough root with? Should we be signing it with open pub key? And if we do sign it with open pub key, what does that mean? It probably means we can't put the public keys in there. We need to keep them in some other log. But another thing Ethan didn't mention is that open pub key supports the idea of uh, multi-factor um, uh, signing. So what we could do is add another signature. Say, hey, I, you know, I've also got to log in with Google, and we'll countersign that and add a third signature to that list. And that's very, very cool. So I know um, not everybody's going to like this. Some people like it, some people don't. But this is what we're doing in the beginning. We're attaching the signatures to indexes um, as images in those index with an unknown architecture. To our knowledge, that kind of works with most tools. It means our signatures are going to move around. It's not going to break the registry. Um, and we understand it's not the end game. We understand that there's artifacts and reference types and all these really important initiatives going on. And we're definitely going to embrace those. But this is just a starting point. And also a, a call to action to engage and help us make this work. Um, we understand that if you're um, tying to specific architectures and images, then there's no way to find, find those, um, uh, those signatures. So, we know this doesn't solve everything, so please do get involved. So here's um, each of the attestations is stored as a layer in that image. Again, it's a bit of a kludge, but it does work. I'm sure people who are in that world will understand um, why we've taken this approach. There you can see the SBOM and the salsa provenance. So the, the provenance attestation here um, there's a little bit more detail, but you can see right there, we've called it an OPK, that's open pub key. And drilling down even further into the signature, here we've got the OIDC payload, with that with the signature stripped. We've got the open pub key signature, and we've got the GQ uh, proof. So that should, if you remember, look very much like Ethan's slide. So there are loads of open questions. Um, I mentioned referrers and artifacts. Another big one is, is um, downgrade attacks. So right now we're not resilient to that because no one's verifying um, signatures. 
but actually notary does um, protect you against downgrade attacks by nature of the fact that the tags themselves are signed. So that is not going to happen with this initial drop. Having said that, the impact is probably extremely low, and there are solutions to that. So we're going to look at that. Um, the other thing is, is, is it possible for the OIDC providers to help here? And I think that there really are opportunities here. And it's good for them, and it's good for us. If this becomes a popular way of signing things, which I think it will, because it's so, so, so easy and open, maybe they could sign their public keys in, in WebPKI. Maybe they could log their public keys and make them available. Maybe they could have their own transparency logs, which actually maybe they should anyway. So I think there's a lot we can do there. Um, yeah, and I mentioned earlier, should we, should we actually sign our, sign the, our tough route with OpenPubKey? And maybe we can with the multi-factor multi stuff. So those are the things that are coming. We're adding the transparency log. We're going to add Docker's tough route. That needs to be added to a whole bunch of clients so that we can actually use it and start verifying those signatures. And we need to solve the, um, the public key logs problem. We're going to add it, be adding them to Tough. We can add a, uh, a checker, um, a monitor to monitor that. And anyone can monitor it. It's all in GitHub. It's all open. So that's the call to action. Come and get involved. We think it's super exciting. Um, and we think it works specifically um, in the um, open for Docker official images. But also, if you want to bring this kind of technology in-house, that's good. You don't need an external CA. You can build on top of your own OIDC provider. So thank you. And if you have any questions, now's a good time. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, thank you for your presentation. So how do you compare open public key with Cosine? Sure. So the question is how to compare uh, open pub key with uh, uh, SigStore's Cosine. Yeah, yeah right. Um, so I would argue that uh, open pub key is a way of binding public keys to um, identities. Um, and so it fits very well within uh, SigStore. Um, uh, you could put open pub key in uh, Falcio. Um, whereas like SigStore uh, has a bunch of other components that are about like signing and transparency logs. Um, uh, and yeah, like signing transparency logs, um, uh, monitoring. And I think all of that stuff is uh, super cool um, and something that can like uh, work, work very well with open pub key. Um, so I don't see them, I see open pub key as a pub key to identity binding mechanism, um, but not as a complete signature uh, system. Uh, Docker has, is building more of a complete signature system, and they're using, pub key, they're using open pub key for this identity pub key binding.